The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that readeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. As we are noticing back the things concerning to this Christendom being led by apostate leaders, morality teachers, and above all, ignorance of the mystery doctrine of the church age. People who emphasize much upon the pseudo-Christian way of mechanics, not able to realize that in this Alekenic it is this new spiritual species of Christ in this unique dispensation, have so great a privilege and responsibility kept upon their shoulders. Given the omnipotent power of all time, being indwelt in the trinity of the body. A trinity of the body, having body, soul, and an activated human spirit at the moment of salvation. And this trinity of a human realm being again indwelt by the trinity of the divine realm. The trinity of God the Father, God the Son, and Lord God the Holy Spirit. Lord God the Father residing in us with a purpose to be fulfilled in Ephesians 1, 3, 6, and 12 to the praise of His glory in His grace. Lord Jesus Christ with a purpose, Shekinah to be indwelt among us. This Shekinah, which was the only manifested right from the Old Testament time, even today, in this church age, every believer has been termed as a temple of the Lord. And then, Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Without His ministry, there is nothing we can understand, the spiritual phenomena. Many preachers might have raised, many theologians might have caused debates that they agree to the indwelling ministry of the, of the Holy Spirit, but not in dwelling ministry towards Lord God the Father and Lord God the Son. Why and what are the reasons behind it? That is what we are exemplifying in each and every tape. The reason, the short span of time we survive in this earth, how valuable each and every breath, how valuable each and every second, because we need to give back unto the Lord, which is due unto Him, that is His glory. And man was created to glorify my Lord, Jesus Christ, to the maximum. Man was created to resolve this angelic conflict. Man was, man was given this privilege to understand in depth what and why he has been made alive. Made alive in trichotomous in nature to be born again. Of course, Many men have our dichotomous in nature, having only body and soul, might have had various speculations in their minds and thoughts, as such Zakir Nayak. And even the Christian believers are no different towards such kind of a dichotomy natured persons. Because they are not able to understand what it is to become spiritually alive, to have that relationship with God consciousness. To have man consciousness, we require this soulish fellowship that does fine, fine, that need not worry. But when you want to have God consciousness, you need to have your activated human spirit. And that activation of the human spirit is not possible until and unless you express a simple act of faith, faith alone in Christ alone. That's what we have been noted of Good Wednesday. But the entire world might have noted yesterday that is Good Friday. Because people are happy enjoying rituals, traditions, 
people are happy reciting those seven phrases of my Lord which he spoke on the cross. Maybe <coughs> yesterday in the entire world, millions of believers might have recited these words. And as a preachers, I don't know how many, how many have them really clearly represented these seven phrases. Because each and every clerk in the church doesn't have a gift of a pastor teacher. The congregational members, they are students. They are babes. And there is no way the pastor can tell, I'm giving you this nice opportunity so that you can be prepared and you can come and preach. And no way a woman has been given this gift, a gift of a pastor teacher to communicate the truth, not to have authority over the men. But the moron pastor teacher who doesn't know the dogma of Bible doctrine emphasize much upon such useless creeds in the church. Telling that I have been giving you an opportunity to come and preach. I have been giving you a chance for you to prepare one week earlier. Come and tell. How do you think it is possible to have an emphasis upon the Lord's word? Do you think these are the words that you speak like a direct and indirect speech? And add some of your viewpoints, telling that in the first phrase it is about forgiveness. Second phrase, it is about the paradise. Fifth phrase, it is about the thirsty. Mind the words that you are speaking about the Lord. When Lord God the Father couldn't spare his own son on the cross, because of you and mine substituted spiritual death which has been laid down upon him. How much more do you think when you're handling his words, you need to be so pure? And do you think handling these words with the things contrary towards the Bible doctrine, you're going to preach it? Bible dogmatically affirms right from the beginning of woman not even to come to the camp when she's in her monthly menses. And doctrine is absolutely true to the point. Only a male believer has this bona fide gift of a pastor teacher, never a female. And practicing one week, it is not a debate. Practicing ten days earlier is not the reason. It is only the gift of a pastor teacher and the significance and the weightage of the theory which Lord has given for us to be understood when you assimilate the entire Bible in comparison to this unique dispensation of the church age. People are thinking whenever I speak about dispensation that I belong to the cult of dispensation. But dispensation is the only dispensing technique for you to lay down the mystery which has been hidden in eternity past. The ages were not aware of this doctrine of the church age. The ages were not aware of the unique spiritual life. The ages were not aware of the protocol plan of God. The ages were not aware about the God who has given for us this invisible portfolio. Ages were not aware that you are being indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, with a purpose. Even the great saint of Old Testament time can never comprehend to you, though you are an ordinary believer in this earth and you have been called as a carnal one. You know why? Because you have been indwelled by the Trinity, but they couldn't have that privilege. Elda and Medad, out of the 70 elders, they went outside of the tabernacle to prophesy to those people, to tell about the Lord. And Joshua reprimands telling to the point, Lord, we will get them back because they are going out of the tabernacle and they are prophesying. You know what Moses tells to them? Moses tells to them, I wish the entire man in the camp would be prophesying for the Lord. You know why? That's the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit upon them as a new man. Because when they are in the Spirit, they will be in the truth. When they are in the Spirit, they will realize the responsibility upon their shoulders. When they are in the Spirit, they know very well what Lord desires in righteousness and in mercy that you sow and you reap the life, the righteousness and honor back to God. So Moses reprimanded them, no, do not stop them. That desire of fulfillment is this church age. Each and every believer has been indwelled by the Trinity. Each and every believer is a Shekinah. Each and every believer has the mentorship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in his life. You know what is the purpose behind that? To learn and to edify them in Bible doctrine. Not to waste their time in the useless and worthless things. Telling to the point that a woman can come and preach. A woman will have a practice for one week. This church age is royal. 
and we are the royal family of God. And to take care of this royal family and to feed this royal family, Lord knows how to raise integrated, loyal pastor teacher to this royal family. What is absent in today's Christendom is emphasis upon morality. That's what we have been exemplifying our tapes. Exemplifying our tapes in answering back Zakir Naik, nothing to be done because we know he is spiritually dead. And the words that he has been telling for us, whether the Lord has been crucified on the cross or not, whether X, Y, Z attitudes about all those things, is what his dead mind is telling to us. That is what his spiritually dead and what he can comprehend Bible doctrine, that he can quote the contexts. And those who are spiritually dead may appreciate those things, telling to the point that he is right. And in fact, even they may have the question telling to the point whether Bible is right or Quran is right. What do they know the origin of the Quran from where it has been arised? If they could look back into the Spectrum magazine of the edition of August 2002 or September 2002, you will have the origin of your Quran. The Cardinal B, who has been kept it, what is the reason behind that, why they have write or written that Quran? But Bible is not that case. Bible is Theonustas God breathed. Heaven and earth may perish away, doesn't require that to be recorded in the Quran because the Quran cannot stand to that word. But Bible alone records to the dogmatical fact that it is God breathed, it is divinely inspired, it is the inspiration of the Lord. Because Bible doctrine alone tells to us, heaven and earth may pass away, but not my words. What a great privilege it is for us believers in the Christ to have this simple faith in the Lord, this simple assurance in the Lord. But are you transferring that doctrine into your soul? If you are not transforming, what is hindering unto you? That's why answering back Zakir Naik is not a big deal, but we, the Christendom believers of this present era of apostasy and heretic, we need to fortify ourselves first in Bible doctrine. We need to have firm foundation in the word of the Lord. We need to give the top priority for Bible doctrine. And if you are not able to have the top priority in Bible doctrine, then what is the purpose that you are surviving in this earth? You do not have any reason as such why you are alive. You do not find any logical thinking behind as such what is your real life. Because Bible doctrine in the church age is very clear for us in this New Testament, which tells to us that if you do not gain to retain the knowledge of the Lord, then dear brethren, Lord will give you to the reprobate mind. And when Lord has given you to those reprobate minds, you know what? You will do those things which you ought not to be done. And that is a very great privilege for us to be understood as believers in Christ. Because we, the church age believers, are not an ordinary one. We, the church age, are being termed out as Aleke Niketes' new spiritual spaces in Christ. Every believer has that equal privilege. Every believer has that equal opportunity. In fact, even every believer has been indwelled by the Trinity. But when you come to the point of this gift of a pastor teacher, there is a differentiation because this gift of a pastor teacher will be bestowed by the head of the church, that is Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, only to those male believers whom he seems fit, who he sees the integrity, whom he sees in eternity past that this is the man who will stand on to my integrity. As we find in the book of Jeremiah chapter 42, the king coming and asking to Jeremiah, we will assuredly do, because today Lord is our witness. Whatsoever you get the word of the Lord, you come and tell to me. When Jeremiah got the word of the Lord, when he's coming and telling to them, he didn't even alter a word. He didn't even diminish a word, but he told to them exactly, because they were telling themselves that they would be a witness unto the Lord. But you know what? Jeremiah was not unfaithful. He delivered to them what Lord had told to them. That's it. With that words, he might have got he might have got a slap upon his face. They might have put him in the dungeon. But Bible doctrine is very clear. Jeremiah was faithful even unto the last moment. Then he came and told to them, but you know what? They refused to hear the word of the Lord. 
exactly in today's christendom it is not morality to be emphasized it is the christian doctrines or the dogma which bible doctrine very clearly delineates in this church age people are not interested in the dogmas or the doctrines but they are interested in the morality standards and you know who is the sponsor of such kind of a teachings satan because satan never wants you to know the truth in fact even satan never wants you to comprehend bible doctrine because when you comprehend bible doctrine you know what are the things concerning satan and what prophecy satan has as a doom but since you do not know since you cannot understand the deep things of satan and you are being ignorant of satan and its tactics and its strategies you are in return becoming a pastor teacher calling yourself as a pastor teacher and being a woman or in fact even being a moron that's what a male believer you try to tell your own reasoning whether it's your own reasoning which says always which i tell the example in india if you want to pass an exam you need to require minimum 35 marks so your own reasoning is not even qualifying you to get one mark or two marks far less you think you can get 35 marks and to be passed because that 35 marks is the process wherewith lord knows what are the standards to be taught for his word because his word is not an ordinary word each and every word which has been given for us in the hebrew and greek has that white age and we are not the one to play the words to change the words or use it direct in indirect speech the pastor teacher is a teaching shepherd and his duty is to expound the scriptures his duty is to study like a drudge day and night meditate upon bible doctrine and tell the truth and that is the reason i have been taking this steps to a lengthy course so that even if not today or tomorrow if anyone has the gift of a pastor teacher could learn and could understand what is the purpose responsibility laid down upon his shoulders because many people today they are not only emphasizing morality where with morality is not even a word used in the bible they want to come and look to the material at the cost of the spiritual to the useless and worthless out overt image and not looking at the inner dynamics of bible doctrine why and what is the reason behind that the simple reason the humble reason is that the ministers are neglecting the responsibility which is laid down upon their shoulders the ministers have turned out to become apostate leaders the ministers have come to such kind of a point that the people are not able to realize what it is in this church age because imbalance which emphasize the invisible to be taught because of imbalance in the doctrinal subjects people are telling to you if you're morally right then everything will be fine and these people are coming straight from satan because these apostate leaders have totally made an imbalance of the things concerning to bible doctrine they tell you your visibleness is important rather than invisible character visibleness is your hypocritical manner what you are you will exactly come to know when you are alone what priority you give what attitudes you have what thinking you perform that is your invisible person to the world and your invisible person also should be directed by bible doctrine to give top priority for bible doctrine dear brethren and since this man do not have so much of time and since this man do not have so much of ability to think satan sponsors them in a simple manner telling them priority for the useless and worthless things of this world the useless and worthless things of this world is morality because morality is not even the standard by which they have been called but rather you have been called to show forth the purity towards an unbeliever and virtue towards a believer and this virtue which i have been told already in the previous tapes is like the medicine if it is there for you to cure a disease any epidemic diseases as well including hiv that is the medicinal virtue 
Since you have taken that medicine, it has been clearing your disease. That's the virtue. So since we have been called out salt of this earth and light of this world, where is the Christian virtue to this unbelieving and perishing world? This unbelieving and perishing world without Christ, without gospel, and the believers without having Bible doctrine, they are losing and perishing among their own selves, the escrow contract of the spiritual life. The escrow contract which tells to them if these are the traits like the desire for truth, love for God, incredible stability and strength of character, your perseverance, your motivation, your momentum, and your happiness and occupation with Christ. Because you have something greater life to be led in this earth. Since there is a problem in the doctrine for dispensations and many people take root in this ignorance, the overwhelming majority of Christians do not know what God has provided for them or why he has given them so much. And after salvation, what? If you could ask them whether I have been saved or not, that's the question they still have in their mind. Because such kind of a moron pastor teachers are emphasizing those things. And when such kind of a moron pastor teachers go to have debate with a dichotomy natured person since they both belong to the same scale of values in their thinking because renovation of your thinking has been told for a believer and since he has not learned doctrine since he has not known the depths of the realm concerning towards God the knowledge which has given for us in the original Hebrew Greek and Aramaic so how can you easily think that you are away from such kind of a dichotomy natured person known as Zakir Naik or Sheikh Hamad Didad? you both have the same weightage in the scales since he is out of doctrine and is spiritually dead, and since you are also not taken the source of doctrine but you are spiritually alive, you tell those things which you think it is compatible, and he tells those things which he thinks is compatible out of context, and then both are leading into the ditch. Because he is dethroning my Lord not to defend it, and he is thinking he has been winning because Christ has not been glorified, because Christ has not been glorified in our eyes because of the things which this pastor is mentioning himself. And such kind of a pastors are ample in today's Christendom, emphasizing upon morality. Sometimes I doubt, and I think again, why these men are coming to the ministry. Why these men are simply blaspheming the name of my Lord? Why these men are not giving time to study and teach? The Bible dogmatically claims to us in Jeremiah 3.15 or Malachi 2.7 or any other work of a pastor in Hosea 4.6 or Hosea 6.6. It's very dogmatically true to the point the lips of the priest should possess knowledge. The pastors who have been coming from the heart of my Lord God Almighty are the one who shall feed you with knowledge and with understanding. In Acts 20.26 20, and 27, Apostle Paul set an example to the pastors, diminished not a word. Word, but tell to them entire counsel of the Lord so that he could be pure from their blood. But now the gimmicks have been turned out in Christendom. The cheap gimmicks of miracles, healings, or the tongues. The cheap gimmicks of substitutory about doctrine with personality cults, church programs, activisms. The cheap gimmicks of personal visitations. They will do everything they require to raise money. They will do everything to require to raise all such kind of a useless and worthless things in this world, but they will never stand up for doctrine. And when such kind of a morons rise and send such kind of a passion raccoons, what will be having your debate? What will be the result in your debate? Dear brethren, do not play things with the word of the Lord. You are answerable for each and every word that you speak. Either you will be justified or you will be condemned. Because Lord is not a man to use such kind of a human natured persons whose heart is deceitful above all things. Who is a perverse natured, the person who walks in such kind of a perverse attitude is never eligible to hold the Bible doctrine. Because when you take in Bible doctrine, the application of it first corrects you. It implies to you, it applies to you. Because you need to stick on to that integrity no matter what it comes like Jeremiah. Jeremiah stood and he told them the entire words of the Lord by not even diminishing a single truth. But then to the people were not capable of standing to the words of Jeremiah to perform and to fulfill, then too they went against the word of the Lord and they got destructed themselves. 
But now, when we consider the mystery doctrine of the church age, when we are emphasizing to you in these so many tapes, to give top priority for exegesis in your pulpit, to start isagogical study, to teach categorical exposition, and to get back into those things which Lord God Almighty desires for you, if you are having the gift of a pastor teacher, to stand faithfully from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 with exegetical study daily, one hour morning, one hour evening, and respond to the things which has been laid on upon your shoulders to the congregation so that the power which works in you can make them perfect and complete into the sight of the Lord, because every believer in Christ, the dispensation technique which Lord Jesus Christ exemplified through Apostle Paul, telling to the point that the manifold wisdom of or many colored variegated structure of Bible doctrine has to be taught in this university and the university is the church and pastor teacher is the dean and the professor is nothing but a saint or a pure a believer who will teach them to this elect and holy angels we are having such kind of a great privilege to be done it is not that any XYZ clock will come and tell this is that, this is that. No. Bible doctrine has to be assimilated. Bible doctrine has to be given the due reverence. Bible doctrine has to be given top priority. If you are not able to look the word and give it that reverence which has the same weightage and honor and glory, when and where you will think you can stand at the judgment seat of Christ. See, it is as simple as blaspheming, maligning a person when we two people meet and talk about the third person who is, who is absent. And when the third person is in our presence, and if we would come to know that such and such were the blasphemous malignment that we had, or maligning nature, or gossiping nature we could perform about that person, and if that person stands right, then where will you keep your face thinking that what you have told was wrong about him? Will you not be ashamed and you will not be will you be able to stand before him and look those things? It's highly impossible, dear brethren. Exactly the word of the Lord is the third person. The two people is a pastor teacher and the congregation. The word of the Lord has to be taught very accurately. We are not the one to blasphemy, to malign the mystery doctrine of the church age. We are not the one to keep hidden the spiritual life. We are not the one to bury this unique dispensation of the church age of the spiritual life of use of by a contract under our pulpits. We are here to expound and tell to them, rephrasing and telling the seven words which the entire world might have observed yesterday as Good Friday has nothing to be done because every year you recite those words. But but what you learn from that, that is not the way, because you need to go further from that. Lord has provided us the salvation. He prayed for us the prayer of forgiveness. In fact, even the prayer of salvation. In fact, even he has given the responsibility upon our shoulders. He has told that we need to be absolutely pure in the fourth word, telling to the point, either even your single sin in your thought, word, or deed is not applicable for you. And we need to give top priority for our right and true fellowship with the Lord. Because either in our word, thought, or deed, we do sin. So the fourth phrase, importance. And the fifth phrase, I am thirsty, so that we can never be thirst. We can never be thirst either in any realm. Even in our worries, what you are worrying, because Bible doctrine is the solution. In your future life, which, is, which will be a lamp to your feet, that will be Bible doctrine. In each and everything what you consider, that will be 100% Bible doctrine, so that you will not only have anything to be thirsted in this life, and then the sixth phrase, it is finished. It is an accomplished fact. Expiatory work has been done. And that too, by faith alone, in Christ alone, you shall be saved. And nothing more works to be added for it. And in the seventh phrase, the way how Lord has kept the ending for a great beginning. And then a beginning for a great ending. So after this what? Lord himself was very clear, telling to the point, the disciples are dull of hearing. So I will send the help, because you cannot comprehend much doctrine if I tell to you. So what did he say? He sent his helper, and his helper through the mentor ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, for Apostle Paul, penned us the corpus and the mystery doctrine of the church age. 
and this church age is what we need to be emphasizing not the seven phrases reminding the re reminding of those seven phrases in that particular day doesn't make you any difference to sustain it's as simple as telling to the point if i have a football match i will just directly come and play yearly once that match and go off and the remaining 360 days you will be not in practice then how can you play that one single day? Exactly the things what I'm trying to tell to you all is Bible doctrine, all the phrases of my Lord, even that single jaw and title has an importance for that. You cannot just forsake it or overlook it. Every dot, every jaw, every title has a meaning. And even those are the phrases which my Lord spoke in eternity past. Even those things ought to be reminded. But majority of the Christian believers, even the pastor teachers, have not completed teaching the entire Bible once. The believers are negative to attitude towards doctrine. And the pastor teachers are ignorant of this doctrine. They go on telling some of the useless things of the Old Testament time, which have much to be done for us to be learnt. They go on tell, telling X, Y, Z attitudes about Christianity, what the morality standards will think. Because the Old Testament time is required for an ensample. But that ensampleness with the authority in, in orientation to the New Testament doctrine gives them deep subjects to be understood. But since they make useless things of the Old Testament time and lose their weightage, even they are doing it and performing for the valuable words of all time recorded and kept for this church age which is a gift a gift for the bible doctrine and the pastor teacher being the gift explainer his work is to tell them the entire realm of the truth people aren't aware of the simple dogmatical truths dear brethren People want to just waste their time in morality. People want to be in such kind of a useless and worthless things of this world that they are never even aware that they have such kind of a great spiritual life to be led. So, my humble plea and request, give top priority for the mystery doctrine of the church age, top priority for the dispensations, top priority for the unique spiritual life, and top priority for the escrow blessings in time as well as in eternity. And that's not possible if you're not growing up in doctrine. And these things we shall continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and our eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. That in the privacy of their soul, in order to believe and they express telling to God the Father that they believe upon His Son. That is the moment itself they shall have this eternal life. And this eternal life is theirs and there for them by a simple act of faith of volition on them, telling to the point that they believe in Christ. Though they are spiritually dead, the weak beep signal taken care by Lord God, the Holy Spirit will act as a human spirit in them and induces to them this eternal life. And this eternal life is the way for them to have this activated human spirit because of the imputed righteousness of Christ. And this human spirit will make them to realize to learn and to give top priority for doctrine because this human spirit is in return controlled by Lord God the Holy Spirit and Lord God the Holy Spirit will in return teach them the necessary doctrine and that necessary doctrine is not possible weekly ones monthly ones but the renewal of your inner man day by day so that when we have been renewed day by day we can get those things which Christ demands in us to be performed and the glory which is due unto him and if you are not able to give that glory which is due unto him, then what is the purpose of your survival in this earth? Think, and we shall look upon these things in the next step. So, Father, we are grateful for the place that the given us to fellowship with thee through thy word. We pray that, Lord God, the Holy Spirit enlighten us in these things, for we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.